Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series, and in this video, I'm going to talk about creating a 3D race car game in Python with your Sun Engine. So first of all, let's import our modules and create a window uh, with the color orange. So from it's not import our star, and we also want to import the random module. And we can set up our basic app like this. And in between, I could set the window color equal to orange. So if I save and run this, now what we have is a nice orange window. Now what I could do is create a road, and this road is going to be where the car is going to be placed on. So it's going to be an entity, I'll set the model equal to a cube, the color equal to green, and I'll set the scale equal to 10 on the x-axis, 0.5 on the y-axis, and 60 on the z-axis. I can set the position equal to 0, 0, 0. And I'll set the texture equal to an image of my assets folder, road.png. So if I run this, you'll notice that I still can't see anything. So if I close it, what I want to do now is to just simply adjust my camera's position and rotation. So I can set camera dial position equal to 0 on the x, 8 on the y, negative 26 on the z-axis. And I can set the rotation equal to, or actually rotation on the x-axis equal to 20. So now if I save and run this, You'll notice that I now have a pretty clear view of the road. So now that I have this, what I want to do is add in my car. So I'll create a car entity, set it equal to an entity. I'll set the parent equal to the road. I'll set the model equal to the cube. The texture equal to an image my assets folder, car. Dot PNG. I'll scale it 0.17 on the x, 0.001 on the y, and 0.06 on the z. I'll set the position equal to negative 0.07, 1, and negative 12, or negative 0.12. And I also want to add in a box collider because we want this car to collide. So if I save and run this, you will see that my car is right there, basically in the center. So now we can make the road image uh, give it like a rolling effect, which gives us the illusion that the car is moving forward. Now we could do this in an update function by offsetting the road image in the y direction with a certain speed. So let's create our update function. Define update. We'll have a global offset variable and a run variable that I'll create down here. So I'll have an offset variable equal to zero initially, and I'll have a run variable equal to true. And so this run variable is going to keep track of whether the game is going to run or not. So if it's true, we want the game to run, and if it's false, we don't want the game to run. So in this update function, we want to check if the run is true, so if we want the game to run, then we want to basically have everything inside this if statement to run. And the first thing is to increase the offset. So offset plus equal to time by dt, multiplied by 0.3. And we could set the attribute of the road, the texture offset, zero, and offset. So if I save and run this, now it makes it look like the car is moving forward because we have basically animated the road. So now what we could do is add in car movement. So moving the car left and right when the D and A arrow keys are pressed. And to do that, we want to check um, if either the D or A arrow keys pressed. So if the D he is pressed, we want the car's x position to move to the right. So car.x plus equal to held keys d. 
multiply by time dot dt, multiply by 0.5. And this is the same thing with the a arrow key, or not the a arrow key, the a key, except we want to decrease the car's x position, which moves it to the left. So held keys, a. Multiply by time by dt, multiplied by 0.5. So now if I save and run this, and hold a or d, you'll see that the car is able to move left and right. Just like that. But you also see that if I move the car too far to the right, it manages to slide off the road, and even off of uh, the basically ground. So what we want to do now is add some boundary checking. To add some boundary checking, we can do that right beneath our arrow keys. So we want to check if car.x is greater than or equal to 0.24. And we will set car.x equal to 0.24. So if the car tries to move out of the right boundary, we set the x position equal to the right boundary. Now if car.x is less than or equal to 0.24, or negative 0.28, we'll set part of x equal to negative 0.28. And so if I save and run this, you'll notice that now my car can't move out of this road boundary, which is exactly what we wanted. So now that we have this done, let's actually create our obstacles for the game. Now the obstacles that we're going to be using are going to be pumpkins with different textures and different sizes. So first, let's create a list to hold the texture images. Right beneath our car, we can create a list of textures and set equal to basically a bunch of textures. So pumpkin color, pumpkin normal, pumpkin roughness and now using uh, list comprehension so textures we can add in the path um, for each element so for s in textures so now what we could do is create our pumpkin entity and I'll do that right beneath the car entity so pumpkin is equal to an entity and set the parent equal to road the rotation around the x-axis equal to 45 degrees also the model equal to a pumpkin obj file i'll set the scale equal to 0.2 on the x 0.1 on the y and 0.1 on the z-axis and set the position equal to 0 0.99.5 0 and also the texture equal to random dot choice texture so this will choose a random texture from our textures list and now I can add in a box clutter and actually since we call or since we call it the textures list, we have to move this textures or this part right above the pumpkin entity. So I'll copy and paste this section where we create our texture list. And I'll move it right above where we create our pumpkin entity right there. So now we can create a pumpkin list to include all the pumpkin entities that we're going to create. So I'm going to have a pumpkins list right here, which is going to be empty initially. And we can create a functions just to create a uh, new pumpkins. So at the top, I'm going to define a define a new pumpkin function. And this will basically create our new pumpkins. So I'll set the scale equal to two on the x, one on the y, one on the z. I'll set the factor equal to random dot uniform point oh two point two. 
I'll set the s equal to uh, create an s variable, and this is going to be a list uh, for element multiplied by the factor for element in the scale. And now I'll set the x equal to random dot uniform negative 0 0.28, 0 0.24, and this is going to choose a random number from negative 0 0.28 to 0 0.24. I'll set the z equal to the same thing, but with 0 0.45 to 0 0.6. And I just want to elaborate right here that s is going to be the scale of the new pumpkin and we can multiply the scale defined above by a factor to get it so we can move on and create a new pumpkin and this is equal to duplicate pumpkin also the scale equal to s so the x equal to x and also the z equal to z and i can set the texture equal to a random choice from our textures and now I can append this new pumpkin into our pumpkins list so pumpkins append new and once this is all done I'll invoke this function once again with a delay of random dot uniform one to three and so within a random time between one and three seconds that function will call itself and a new pumpkin will be created. So now we're going to call the function to create our new pumpkins. And we, uh, again, once I create this function, or call this function actually, which I'll do right here. So create a new pumpkin. Once I call this function, we still can't see the pumpkins because they're going to be out of the window. So what we need to do is actually move our pumpkins in the update function. So if I go up to our update function, right beneath the if statements, I can use a loop. So for pumpkin and pumpkins, so this iterates through every single pumpkin in our pumpkins list. I can decrease the pumpkin's z position by time by dt multiplied by 0.3. And so if I run this, you'll see that our pumpkins do indeed move uh, towards our car. Because we don't destroy our pumpkins at all, you'll notice that the list will become larger and larger, and hence use an unnecessary amount of memory and slow down the game. And that means that, or actually to solve that, we want to actually destroy the pumpkins at some point. And to do this, we can have a crash function. So I'll create our crash function right here. Define crash. Actually, before I define my crash function, which does this, I need to check if the pumpkin goes behind the car. Then what I'm going to do is just destroy that pumpkin. So if, and this is in my update function, if pumpkin, well not just in my update function, inside this for loop as well. So if pumpkin dot z is less than or equal to negative 20 then I'm going to remove that pumpkin from the pumpkins list and I'm also going to destroy that pumpkin and so that should solve our problem with uh, having too much too many pumpkins in our list and now once that is done now we can create our crash function. And what this crash function will do is detect collision between our pumpkin and our car. So inside of this crash function, the very first thing we want to do is have text. And this text will just say, crashed, reload the game. I'll set the origin equal to 0, 0. I'll set the scale equal to 3. I set the color equal to color yellow. And I can set the background equal to true. Now we can finally create collisions in the update function. 
Now here, I don't want to use the intersex function uh, because I want to have more control of when the collision happens. So let's update a function. I want to check if the absolute value of car.x minus pumpkin.x is less than 0.1 and if the absolute value of car.z minus pumpkin.z is less than 0.05 then I'll invoke the crash function with a delay of 1 and I'll also set run equal to false so now or basically what this does is that it will invoke the crash function when the car crashes with a pumpkin and it will set these this run variable equal to false which basically stops the game so if I save and run this, I can avoid these pumpkins with my car like this, moving left and right, I'll dodge that. And eventually when I do manage to hit a pumpkin, I have this message saying I crashed and I have to reload the game. So let me play that again. I can dodge this one, I'll dodge this one again. And then eventually I reach a point where I crash, oops, and I have to reload the game. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them below at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.